Hey, what's up everybody? Still working on this C10. I'm gonna throw this video together so you can see where we're at. Finally got a few things done. It's been kind of slow going. I think I lost most of the month of September to the old creeping crud going around. I don't wish that crap on nobody, pretty rough. But anyway, I made it through that, back to the grind. So hang out I'll show you where we're at. We'll just keep going. So here's one thing that's key. You wanna make sure that you get in every crack and crevice with that scotch bright. That is key to adhesion of the, the sealer, the paint, everything on top of it. If there's something that's not sanded good, there's a potential that it's gonna peel. Now I've got to paint the inside of this and then flip it over and mask off the inside and paint the outside. And you do not wanna see paint peel when you unmask everything. That's the worst thing that can happen creates lots of problems. Okay, so now I've got everything sanded. It's clean, it's time to tape it up, mask everything off that I don't want to get paint on. So what I want to do is outline the area back with some paper and lay it across there and cut it out. When I put the masking paper on this bedside, I could just follow the edge of the yellow tape. I could follow the curve around the wheelhouse and mask it off that way. But just remember that paper does not like to go around corners. So if you can keep it straight, it's usually better. The way I'm gonna go across this, I'm just gonna go straight across and cut out the middle of the wheelhouse. And that's gonna make the paper nice and flat, not a lot of creases, nothing to catch dirt. So it should help to have a, a cleaner paint job. Notice I'm lifting the paper as I cut because I'm not pressing down, you do not want to press down and cut into the surface underneath. If you look closely, you can see one of my fingers is actually pressing down the paper. The razor blade is kind of floating in between my finger that's pressing down and the hand that I'm picking up the paper with. So I'm basically using my finger to help me avoid putting too much pressure on what I'm cutting. Here I'm putting on a dark gray sealer. I like to use sealer whenever I have it. If I didn't have any sealer for some reason, I would go ahead and paint directly onto the surface. It's got a good scratch in it. I've sanded it well. Uh, it's, it should stick with no problem. I do like the extra adhesion that sealer gives me, and it also keeps me from using so much of the top coat color. I've got a limited amount of the hot rod black that's going on here. So if I get it close to the color it's gonna be, it's a lot easier to cover with the final product. So it's been about 15 minutes and I'm checking to see if my sealer is dry. 
It's a little cooler now, so it's not dry. When I look at it, I see that there's spots in the creases where it's still shiny and wet. You do not want to paint on top of this. You may get the top coat on and it look good, but that solvent's still sitting there and it's going to cause adhesion problems down the road. Now that I've given it plenty of flash time and it's completely dry, it's time to top coat it with two coats of hot rod black. So we've got our flat black painted inside our wheel tubs and inside the bedsides where we want it. So now it's time to prep the wheel tubs. I start off by stick blocking with 320. Now these things are already very straight as many times as we've blocked on them. So I still use my stick to make sure it's flat and then we'll break out the DA and put some 400 on there. I go pretty fast with the 400. If you hit an edge and stay there very long, it's gonna cut right through it. So you want to keep moving with the 400 and get everything sanded. Then we'll go back by hand and hit some of the edges and follow that by a red scotch bright. So just in case you're wondering why I would put on a sealer that's so close to the primer color that's on there. Well, the reason is consistency. I want to treat every panel that I paint the same way. Some of the other panels may have had a spot or two where I sanded through or the color wasn't consistent. So I put sealer on those. So if I did that to one panel, I want to do it to every panel. Another reason is for adhesion. I sanded these in 400 grit. The final grit that I sanded these with was 400. Solid color over 400 should be fine. You shouldn't have a problem with scratches showing or anything, but that sealer is gonna really grab onto that 400 grit and the sealer gets rid of the 400 grit. So I've got a smooth surface to put my color on. And like I said earlier, I'm doing it for consistency. If I do it to one panel, I do it to all the panels. Most likely this color is going to match, won't have any issues. I'm going to cover all my bases and I'm not going to give it the option of not matching. If everything's done the same way every time, there should not be a color match issue. Once I'm done spraying the sealer, I go outside the booth and I'm gonna turn the heat on. It shows me that it was 77, 78 degrees in the booth while I was spraying. And now that it's on, it's gonna go up to the set temperature of about 86 degrees and that's gonna help it dry. So if you're new to painting, one thing people have trouble with is where to start, how to make sure they got everything covered. You just got to break it down into sections and remember that everything has dimension and paint, when it comes out of that gun, it does not turn corners. So you've got to get one, one section done at a time. If it's round, you've got to approach it from different angles to make sure that it's covered. It just takes time, practice. And the best thing to do is when you get done spraying, go back and look over it. Really, really good. Uh -huh. 
No rest 